What's up ladies and gentlemen, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to legitimately solo mine Bitcoin with any Windows based computer on your CPU. So a lot of people, will, you'll see videos mine Bitcoin within any computer. 99% um, of the time, every video I've ever seen, you're mining a different algorithm and then it's converting that coin over that you're receiving uh, into Bitcoin and you're receiving Bitcoin. But if you actually want to solo mine Bitcoin where you try to solve a block by yourself with your hardware, typically most people use ASICs because they're a lot more efficient. But you can actually use your computer and your CPU power on your computer. You don't have to use all of your cores and threads on your computer. You can just use a couple, let them run in the background, and then have that lottery chance of maybe one day hitting a block. Now, is it likely? No. Uh, could it happen? It could. If it does happen to you, don't forget about me. Anyway, let's get started and I'll show you how to get down to business, how to do it. The first thing you're going to need to do is go to, to the link down below in the description. Um, this is uh, a miner that I found. It's called Pooler Miner. It is about five years old, but it still does work. Uh, it doesn't look like there's been any development on CPU miners for Bitcoin because it's been they CPUs have been irrelevant for years. Uh, they're just not efficient, but they don't have to be efficient if you're just trying to hit a solo block. So like, like I said, you know, you could still have that chance. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and download this, uh, right here. And I made sure to make this Google drive, uh, public. So if you have the link, you're able to download it. Uh, sorry, this is file is infected with a virus. So this is not infected with a virus and you can check it with other things. Um, what it does is it sees that SHA-256 mining application and typically uh, in the past, a lot of viruses would use that mining application to mine on your computer and that's why it shows up as a virus. So we're gonna click on download the infected file. And if you want to do this on a you know a blank computer or a VM, um, you're able to do that as well. You don't have to do this on your main computer. And I actually encourage you not to do it on your main computer, uh, especially if you have like an old laptop or something. I, I'm going to be doing a video on setting up an old laptop, turning the screen off, and kind of using it as a lottery miner. Um, so what we want to do is it, uh, Chrome blocked that download. So go to full download history. And then we're going to go to uh, click here and download dangerous file. So download dangerous file. Yes, absolutely. We want all the danger. Um, then we're going to open it in the folder and we're going to dr uh, drag this to the desktop. Let's minimize everything. Let's see here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this stuff out of the way. We were compiling and moving stuff around, just trying to make it easier because if you've ever tried to use Pooler Miner, uh, straight from the GitHub, it is difficult, annoying. So we're gonna extract these files. I'm using WinRAR, but if you're using regular Windows, you can just unzip it, that's fine too. So we're gonna unzip those. There's our new folder that popped up. So JellyFC BTC CPU Solar Miner, Solo Miner version 1.0. We're gonna open that file and open this folder. And inside this folder is the uh, going to be two links. One is the Jelly FC BTC solo pool. If you double click on that, it will open up <coughs> uh, our community Jelly FC uh, solo pool. So you can see there's 37 terahash on there. There's 28 miners. Obviously, we have not hit a block yet, none of our miners, but um, we're, we're, we're trying. We're definitely trying. So we're going to minimize that. There's also a link to the Web3 portal. Um, that's if you wanted to do anything else with the Jelly FC ecosystem, which has its own coin and all that kind of stuff. I'm sure if you're here, you probably know a little bit about it. If not, you can always jump into that later. Um, moving down, there's the actual minor minor D application. Don't run the application. You're gonna want to first right click on the launch CPU miner version 1.0 and click edit. If you're not able to edit it, yeah, the software publisher cannot be verified. Are you sure you want to run this? Um, yes, run. Uh, if you're not able to edit it, you want to open it with Notepad. Once you open it with Notepad, you're going to see some information here. The first thing you're going to see is threads. So this changes the amount of threads that the miner will use on your computer. I have it set at four right now, so that way it doesn't 
chug and lag out my computer while I'm recording this video. Previously, I was running it at the full 16 threads and I noticed my computer was really laggy. So I recommend if you wanna run it at pretty much full power but not freeze your system up, uh, if you have a eight core 16 thread system, set it at 15 threads. Leave yourself one empty thread so that it won't lock up your system. So for example, if you have a four core eight thread system, put it at seven threads if you wanna maximize your power. If you wanna still be able to use your computer, just set it at about 20%. So, you know, on a 10 thread system, uh, put it at two threads. On a 20 thread system, four threads. And 16 thread, set, thread system, you know, three or four threads, something like that. You can always go back in here and change this as long as the mining application is not running. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to change is where it says user pass equals. So this number that starts with 3GA all the way over to uh, the period, this is your actual Bitcoin wallet address. You need to replace that because that is my Bitcoin wallet address right there. So if you automatically start running it, you're gonna be mining to my solo Bitcoin wallet address. Um, and then after the period, this is your worker name. And then this is the password section. You don't have to change the password section. We don't have passwords enabled on the pool. So anybody can mine to any address because essentially they'd be just donating it. Um, now, like I said, this is solo mining. So you don't get anything unless you solve a block. So the more threads you use, potentially the more chance you have at solving it because you have an increased hash rate. So once you have all that information changed, your wallet address is switched over to your wallet address and you have to use a legitimate Bitcoin wallet address, not a lightning address or not a lightning username. Um, and then also the threads are however many you want. Uh, you just file save or save as and just make sure when you save it, it is not save type as text document. It has to be all files and then you can click save. It'll ask you to overwrite it and then you're good to go. And then all you have to do is launch it. So you can double click and yep, click run and then it'll start working. So stratum work uh, restart, that's fine. Sometimes it'll restart one or twice, one or two times. Once it gets going, then you're good to go. So it connected to btc.jellyfc.com. I'll show you how to check your stats here in a second. Um, once it gets a couple accepted shares. So we'll let that mine for a second. And if you're on a slow system, it might take it a while to actually uh, get an accepted share. So right now I'm only using four threads. The CPU that this is mining on right now is a Ryzen 7 5700G, which is not a super new CPU, but it's still relevant. Um, it's, it's not like ancient by any standards. You can still play some modern games on it and stuff like that. So, um, stratum requested work restart. Yep, I'll do that one or two times. And then we should get an accepted share sooner than later. Should, we should. Um, let me, I guess while we're waiting on that, we can go back over here and go to the BTC, uh, Jelly FC BTC solo pool link and I'll show you how to check your stats. So on this left side, you're gonna to wanna to go to dashboard and put your wallet address in right there. So once you put your wallet address in, which let me get my wallet address here. Oh, there we go. So we have one accepted share so far, uh, one out of one, that's good. If you have rejected shares, you potentially uh, have something unstable on your system, maybe too high of an overclock, uh, it's overheating, thermal throttling, um, there's issues, but you sh probably won't have any issues. Right now we're running at 61,961 kilohash or 61 mega hash. So to put that in reference, uh, those one mega hash nerd miners, we're running about 61 of those. So the CPU is actually not doing too bad. And if we open up task manager right now, we can see that um, it is, it's using a bit of CPUs for sure. Uh, which threads, I'm not sure, but um, my processes, we're at about 50%. That's running four threads, but I am also running OBS. So it looks like Windows Command Pro Processor, that's the one that's actually doing the mining. So it's using 29, 28%, so almost 30% of my CPU, which four threads, 
Uh, four times three would be 12. So not exactly a perfect arrangement for four threads for 30%. I don't know. Anyway, it's still work. And if we do, look, we got seven accepted shares. So, and also if you close it out, if you close out the application, it will go away. It doesn't hang uh, or anything like that. And it goes completely away. And then you, to relaunch it, run, and you'll see it'll fire right back up and jump right back up to the top of the list. So another good way to check it. And by the way, this is just task manager. If you don't know how to open that, you can go to uh, type task manager in the search bar or control shift and escape all at the same time to open it up. Um, now to actually check your stats, let me grab my wallet address out of this file real quick right here because I don't have it copied on hand. There we go. We'll copy that. Close that. Um, we'll open up this page. So we're going to go to the dashboard, which right now it, it's really hard to see on my recording screen, but it's not on my actual screen. Don't know why that is. Uh, but paste your wallet address in right there. Hit load wallet stats. And then uh, it'll show you your total terahash of all your connected devices. But we're going to go over to workers. And I have quite a few different workers connected. So um, I have a Gamma, a Disruptor. The one that says Dono CPU is the one that is currently uh, connected right now. So you'll notice we're getting 3.3 mega hash was the hash rate that's last reported, which it showed 60,000 kilohash. So that's more like 60 mega hash. I'll let it run for a little bit and see if uh, this can't catch up and show a higher hash rate. But um, yeah, and that, that's pretty much it. Then you're off to the races. So the hard part now is just hitting that actual Bitcoin block because to hit a Bitcoin block with 60 mega hash is basically impossible. Like one, one in a bajillion chance. But there is a chance and that's why they call it lottery mining because if you do solve that Bitcoin block, it is over $300,000 in value. And that's why I have some of my smaller miners currently mining on it and hoping one day we'll hit that elusive Bitcoin block. Um, anyway, moving on, moving forward. Uh, let's see here. Okay, look, there it's coming up right now. We're at 25 mega hash. So it just needs to run for a little while and then it'll, it'll settle out and you'll be good to go. Um, looks like we have two accepted shares um another accepted chair there was a stratum requested work restart oh it looks like boo we had a bad chair don't know why that is maybe because i'm trying to record at the same time not sure and see you'll see it, it says two out of three and three out of four that means one of those four shares was bad but yeah in other news um thanks for coming out i really do appreciate it if you have any questions comments concerns anything like that please just fire your questions down below and um, happy hunting. So if you solve that Bitcoin block, like I said, don't forget about me. Um, I've thought about going through and doing a, uh, like a data sheet and seeing what CPUs make what hash rate. So that'll probably, that'll probably be a future video, definitely. Um, because I'm, I'm curious. But if you did end up running the miner, drop it down below. What was your CPU doing? How much hash rate did it do? I'm super curious. And um, yeah, as always, have a good one. I'll see you on the flip side. Adios, ladies and gentlemen.